All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to this uh, Tuesday, January 9th, BOMO work session. Uh, we'll start the meeting by calling the roll. Alderman Barnhill. Present. Alderman Caesar. Present. Alderman Potts. Present. Alderman Berger. Present. Alderman Baggett. Present. Alderman Peterson. Here. Alderman Blanton is absent, and the mayor is absent. Uh, first item, Eric. You have a, a quick uh, introduction to make. First of all, Happy New Year. We're still in single digits, so I think I can say that still, right? I uh, want to make an introduction of a new team member in administration. Uh, Kim Benicus joins us in our administrative assistant role. And Kim comes most recently from Williamson County Schools, but has also worked in both public and private sector in an administrative uh, role. So we're Thrilled to have her on board. She's just joined us right before the holidays, and uh, this is our first chance to introduce you to the board. She'll be working some with you, but with the public right here as they come in and see us in administration. So welcome, Kim. Uh, next on, on the agenda is opportunity for citizen comments. I do not have any speaker cards. do not see anyone wishing to make a comment, so uh, we'll go on with the next item. First item on the agenda is presentation on new city hall at 100% schematic design. All right, I'll just say a couple words to introduce this. This is uh, obviously a process we've been working on for the better part of the last year and are thrilled to be at this point where it's at 100% schematic uh, design. This has taken your input, input of historic zoning, feedback from our staff team, and uh, wanna get your feedback tonight further as we um, complete this this milestone in the process. And we have representatives from our design team and our staff team here, and I'll let Kelly make the remaining introduction. All right, thank you, Eric. I, I am very thrilled to be here today with our consultant team as we plan for our new city hall. Anna Ruth Kimbrough is with us, Matt Taylor and Gary Seabaugh are all with us today, and I will turn it. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe Marlowe just left to him, and he has been instrumental on the City Hall project side of things. Um, but I'll turn it over to Anna Ruth to walk you through the plans, both exterior and interior. Great. Thank you, Kelly. Can y'all hear me okay? Okay. I'm Anna Ruth Kimbrough, like Kelly said, and I'm the design team representative for the new City Hall project. Today, we'll be sharing the 100% schematic design progress, including the feedback we gained from the Design Review Committee on the 100% exterior design. We are currently acquiring two separate cost estimates of the 100% schematic design, one from Parent Company, who is our pre-construction cost estimator on the consultant team, and one independent cost estimate. We'll be bringing that back to you in February, along with the Phase 3 draft proposal for your consideration. The purpose of today's discussion is to provide an overview of the final schematic design as we begin to prepare for phase three, which will be the design development and construction document phases. So we are re revisiting the design of the community space on the corner of Third Avenue and Church Street um, since the commercial has now been moved into the footprint of City Hall. The open space is an approximately one acre park, which is highlighted in green here on this slide. City staff issued a survey to gain feedback on the community's overall uh, vision for the park and received tremendous amount of feedback from over a thousand respondents. So that was exciting. Our team will incorporate the feedback into a new concept for the park and bring it back to you for your direction in phase three. Also on this slide, you'll see an image which was identified as the design inspiration for the commercial that is now incorporated into the first floor footprint of City Hall. So the commercial is now in the first floor footprint of that portion of the building that's highlighted in yellow. We'll be reviewing the 100% schematic design elevations of the commercial later on, but wanted to share this photo as a reminder of the inspiration, particularly the soft patina green color um, of the storefront, which we envision for the storefront of the commercial. We think it'll complement the park nicely and blend in with the residential character. So we're gonna start um, the 100% design review with the floor plans, and this is the overall floor plan of the subgrade parking garage with 200 parking spaces, which will free up um, parking spaces in the 300 um, space parking garage, the Second Avenue parking garage for public use. 
So here's the first floor of City Hall. Um, most of you are familiar with it. Um, so visitors will enter City Hall through a main entrance facing Public Square. I'm highlighting it in yellow because it might be harder to see on what, what you, you guys got. Um, and then there'll be an approved pedestrian promenade to the Second Avenue parking garage that'll be widened and a better experience for those that visit City Hall. Upon entry into City Hall, you'll be greeted in a main lobby, which connects you directly to the boardroom, again highlighted in yellow, or around to the public facing counters of court and revenue. And then on around to the community room, which we refer to in this building as the training room, and then the executive conference room. So those are all public meeting spaces um, surrounding the lobby. As mentioned on the previous slide and um, from your direction in the previous meeting, we relocated the IT department to the second floor above the boardroom in order to move the commercial use into the footprint, which is highlighted in yellow in the lower right corner of the plan. This will be two to three uh, commercial tenants that will provide amenities for staff in the community and support the function of the park, which is highlighted in green to the right of the plan. So just to orient you to the overall site. So this is the second floor plan, which will be home to the development services zone, which includes building and neighborhood services, the planning department, the engineering department, fire administration, and then the relocated IT department, which is above the boardroom, and then a central break room for all staff to use throughout the building. And moving on to the third and final floor, this is the smallest of uh, floor plate of the building, and it will house the administrative zone, which will include mayor and administration, law department, human resources, and then finance and purchasing. There will also be a flexible meeting space that we've discussed with you in prior meetings, which will re we refer to as the living room that will overlook the um, public square, have a nice view of the square. So we're gonna move on to the um, exterior design progress. Um, we're really excited to share this with you tonight. The evolution um, of this design has been a collaborative effort between you, the BOMA, and the Design Review Committee. And what you're gonna see tonight is a culmination of all that input we have received over the past year. So this is a view of the main entrance facing um, Public Square. The Design Review Committee has continued to work with our consultant team on the evolution of the project, which will be refined further throughout phase three, the next phase. Um, one suggestion is they would like us to explore a different design idea for the entry canopy to further differentiate it from the entry canopies of the neighboring building, which is 231 Public Square to the left. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the... Uh, <laughs> This is the Third Avenue elevation, which is um, the center portion is the boardroom portion of the plan that faces Third Avenue. Um, and you can see another view of the plaza uh, that wraps around from the square to Third Avenue. And then in the distance further down Third Avenue, you can see the two-story um, commercial uh, portion of the building that's um, right after that courtyard break in the plan. And then here's a view of the two-story commercial a render view that um, is taken from the sidewalk along 3rd as if the pedestrian is approaching the building from the park that's on 3rd um, and Church. So again, you can see the patina green um, storefronts that we looked at in the inspiration image. And the idea is that we would wrap this commercial language around the corner and um, provide an open plaza space for potential outdoor seating outside the commercial use, which you can start to see in the lower right corner of the rendering. And then finally, the alley elevation. This is a view taken from the east end of the alley looking back towards 231 Public Square, which you can see in the distance, the browner colored brick. Um, and so the language of the west elevation of the city hall that's along the pedestrian promenade that connects to the Second Avenue parking garage would wrap around that corner and continue down the alley. You can see in the foreground the um, entrance into the subgrade parking garage. And then this last portion of the elevation will continue around to the elevation facing the park and on around to the um, two-story commercial that's on Third Avenue, which we saw on the previous slide. So I know that was really brief, but we wanted to provide an overview. Um, and then we have some other views if you want to look at it, but want to hear your feedback and really 
appreciate your continual support on this. Thank you. Alderman Burr. Don't you touch that canopy. <laughs> <laughs> Who suggested that? I want to know. Uh, it's perfect. It's perfect to uh, play off of the one, and it. it's not going to look exactly. I mean, you can make it a little higher or uh, wider or something to offset it a little bit. But it's going to say City Hall in there, and I, I, th I think it complements that really well. Um, this is superb. Mm -hmm. I remember where we started. We've come a long way. Um, because this is here, we hope, for hundreds of years. And the attention to detail, because I'm a very visual person, and I um, have smart in my background, so I'm always interested in this. Uh, I like what you've done with the layouts and everything. Uh, are we still keeping the internal staircase, though? Maybe not as wide, but at least the internal staircase where you might get three or four people abreast to like two people going up, two people going down. What do we have? Yes, yeah, so we, we do that? have it. So um, I'm sorry, all this yellow. Um, I'm on slide five. Slide five. Okay. which is the second floor you can see it better because yeah. it it goes over that greeter desk on the first floor and then it's about um, five and a half feet wide so two people can yeah. pass on it and it's a switchback stair so can you see it at the top portion of the lobby so I don't know if I yes <laughs> yeah no, I don't see it, so it's just above the entrance on the square yes, side slide. if in the plan slide okay there you go all right, I'm just going to go back to slide yeah, two. I need, I need to find glasses for that. Uh, <clears throat> now, how many extra spaces were in that new part of that garage? Is two? 200. 200? 200. Uh -huh. 200. Um, all right, and um, we had, um, you have the IT above mm -hmm. the, bo uh, the boardroom. The mm -hmm. Is that correct? Correct. Is that, does that help? for any other purposes for the technology reasons to put it above the board? Um, well, one of the reasons is that IT was the department that was relocated is they don't have an adjacency requirement that the other departments have, like in development services yeah. and administration. So they can be somewhat remote, and they're actually now above the boardroom where they control a lot of the technology exactly. for these types of meetings. So it really did end up being a, mm -hmm. a good move mm -hmm. as far as where IT is okay. located. Um, I don't have a lot of questions, and I really don't have a lot of uh, critical criticisms for it at, at all. I will say that I think you did a superb uh, job on the mm -hmm. facade for the commercial oh, because okay. it really separates it from the building, makes it stand out. You know it's something different. You know it's not just City Hall. Uh, later, 10 years, 15 years down the road, if we need that space, we can take that space over and make it into City Hall. But for now, for what we need, it, it looks very inviting. The colors are perfect to fit in with the historic downtown Franklin. I'm glad you um, selected the uh, patina, isn't mm -hmm. it? Patina yeah. copper. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's very historic and it goes along with that. Um, how many um, is there? Is a I can't see exactly here, but the I think it's slide ten. Oh Lordy! Uh, is there a bridge that goes over to the garage? Did you say? Or just oh, it's the ramp down. So the um, what are those bars yeah. called? Oh, that but ramp on the on the left. Yes. See, um, in the foreground, see where the louvers are. The bottom left of the rendering. Yeah, right. yeah that's that's the ramp that's down. That's the opening yeah. that you'll drive through to get down to the basement. So I'm bar. seeing the four in the, in the far or down by the trees. There is not some kind of. No, no, that's the 231 belt. So that's the um, widened pedestrian promenade between 231 okay. and the building. That's and so the, the language of the elevation along the promenade wraps it's around to this okay. alley elevation. Um, I may have another comment or two, but for now I'm, okay. I'm good. Thank you. Very much. Alderman Caesar. Yeah, thank you for introducing and walking me through this more complete document. Um, I, I spent some time earlier 
in, I guess it was later in December, doing an additional deep dive. And, um, and I think you've designed some really, really impressive facades and the internal piece I'm excited to see that continue to evolve and grow. Uh, I just have maybe two questions initially that jump off the page on, on slide number nine. The width of the sidewalk, um, can you help me? This may not be to scale. It, yes. It looks like we've got a 40 foot wide <laughs> sidewalk. Um, You're good at reading renderings. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, what we did was we looked across the street down um, close to the historic courthouse and it was like a 20 to 24 foot, if I remember correctly, um, distance from curb to building. And we based that depth to give it more um, not as narrow as Main Street, you know, um, but it won't, it'll have a lot more character with pavers and that sort of thing. We just haven't, the site design has not been fully developed yet. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. we'll come back and continue to evolve these renderings and show that in more Is detail. Is there a requirement to keep the building that far off the street other than to try to match with we're, the, we're just the trying to match contextually the other side of the street and then um i don't know if in your review we're, we're also repairing the geometry of the square so the front wall of city hall will align with the front main wall of the courthouse so that geometry yeah, will be yeah uh, i don't know that we talked about that but we also talked a little bit about street parking and my familiarity with parking along the street and coming in through the side and the the mm -hmm. flags being there i think over time we'll learn to get more comfortable with that not being the right. primary entrance point right. Um, do we anticipate still having street parking? Um, there is along Church Street and some on, on 3rd, and then there'll be a drop-off zone, too, that we'll have for, yeah. for you know, meetings and that sort of thing, closer to the square. Uh -huh. That's good. And then final question, and mm -hmm. to get into the weeds a little bit, we obviously have lots of downtown events, mm -hmm. and the area um, along Main Street, most of the vendors are required to be in the street with the size of the of the sidewalk here now. Mm -hmm. Do we anticipate that shifting mm -hmm. how vendors interact during an event? Uh, potentially, and I think the community open space will provide a really good opportunity for that just to even keep it off the street and bring people down third and really make that a community amenity where people gather. It could be a really great. nice but with food trucks or something, you know, whatever that ends up being. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, great. Well, thank okay. you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Anyone else? Alderman Potts. Thank you, sir. Mr. Weissmeyer. Uh, uh, did have number one. Thank you very much. Great, great yeah. renderings. Really appreciate the time, energy, and effort that you and the entire team, very broad team, have put into this. Um, it, uh, I think it, it complements our downtown, and um, there, there's just a lot of great things. I've got a few questions, though. Um, one of which is, as I'm looking at uh, slide number, I think if I go to, we'll say slide number seven. And you're, you can see the entrance there to City Hall that uh, Alderman Berger was just referencing where the sign is, but that circular area, uh, or that is, um, are we going to run any type of electrical uh, outlets, and AV? Okay, I see lots of head nods. Great. All right. I figure we're always forward thinking on those things. Um, and then as I'm looking at seven and even at eight, um, these are all daytime pictures. Do we have uh, any future renderings that you might be able to provide to give us an idea of what the nighttime yeah. lighting would look like? We, yeah, we'll um, definitely have that. When we select lighting, a lot of the lighting companies can provide um, lit renderings okay. of actually how the lights. We did that on 231 Public Square just to see. Um, see those lights as well. So we'll definitely be able to do that okay. later in the process. Yeah, and I'd really like to see when we get to that lighting, uh, and I know you've already got the focus of complimenting and keeping things historic, is uh, whether that source lighting is going to be both a source from the surface up mm -hmm. or from the top mm. of the building down right. so that we're not just creating this monolith. And we won't be able there. to just... Um, partially because of the site photometric requirements of Franklin. Mm -hmm. And then also this is lead silver. So we need to be night right. sky compliant. So um, we'll have to Excellent. That. that was actually my yeah. next question is uh, where we were. If it's lead silver. We're on target. All right, good. All right, <laughs> stay on target. Okay. <laughs> good quote, stay on target. Okay. All right. And then uh, I've got one more question. This is also on slide eight. At one point, uh, I know that... Um, 
Uh, Alderman Blanton and I had also spoke to this about a handicap ramp. Mm -hmm. um, could you remind everybody uh, where that's going to be, what that's going to look like? Because we had talked about it being on this side as we're looking at slide eight. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the site plan with me. It's actually going to be on the pedestrian promenade between oh. City Hall and 231. So if you can see the planters okay. really close to that courtyard yeah. element that's on 231, it'll it'll follow that wall of that courtyard on 231. Are you familiar okay. with that? Because a lot of people will be coming from the parking garage. Mm -hmm. um, on third, the space that it was going to take to get the slope of the ramp, it just really interrupted the... the um, streetscape traffic on Third Avenue, and we felt that coming from the Second Avenue parking garage, that was a more convenient place to okay. put it at the main entrance. Because otherwise, I mean, you're only coming in facing Public Square, so you would come up the ramp and still have to go around to Public Square. Yeah. And I understand the convenience factor. The reason why I'm asking about it, and I've asked about it in previous meetings, is for many of our Main Street events, for our larger mm -hmm. events, mm -hmm. I have seen a lot of individuals who, ha who are in wheelchairs mm -hmm. coming from that direction mm -hmm. towards the square and then I, I have personally yeah. taken people through our front door over here all the way around through mm -hmm. the building just to get around. Mm -hmm. And so without that ramp right there, it, it does mm -hmm. pose those issues. And, you know, they're continued. And especially as we get larger groups and we're having different types of functions right there, I see an issue with those individuals having to go from one side of the building all the way around to the other side of the building um, like that. So... If there's anything as you go back through engineering that can be done, it would yeah, be great. We have some sketches of it, so okay. maybe next time we'll share that with you and discuss it further in more detail. Okay, mm -hmm. that would be great. Maybe signage. Pop, yeah, some signage. Si ab signage. at a minimum. At a minimum. And, and even yeah. on Third Avenue, you bring this. Uh, this is an excellent point. Even on Third Avenue, you could have a signage that says handicap ramp on the square side. Right. Right. Well, and I know on the historic courthouse too, it's on that side really removed right. from mm -hmm. public square even. even right, more. but so, we're, yeah. we're making a generational building here. So yes. we've got to, I don't want to be the I same as that, that. historic <laughs> building. Thank you. Sir. Um, and then the last thing, this is more for the interior. Um, could you go into, and I actually thought about this over the weekend while I was prepping. Um, most of our meetings that uh, are public facing are done in this room. Are there any meeting spaces that are going to be built for public facing? Uh, I know we have the training room mm -hmm. down on that end. Could you speak to that just a little bit? Yeah, sure. They're, they're spread throughout the public zone of the building. So okay. um, in previous meetings, we mentioned that orange dashed line on each plan, um, which mm -hmm. represents the staff secure zone and the public zone. It's not visible. It's just showing you where there's public access versus um, staff. So on the first floor, we will be using the executive conference room for smaller public meetings. I think beer board and other meetings have been identified, which is that room behind the boardroom. Mm -hmm. um, and then as you go up to um, development services zone on the second floor, there's conference rooms of all different sizes within the um, second floor public zone. So you can you see on there it says like CNF 14, CNF 8, a mm -hmm. tea table. So they're going to be um, public conference rooms on each floor that staff can come out and meet with the public for different types of meetings as well. So they're scattered throughout, not just on the first floor. That's good. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Alderman Baggett. Thank you. This is good. Um, mm -hmm. The just making sure because the cost estimates the the cost estimates should only shouldn't include build out of any of the tenant space correct correct, correct. It's, it's we're going to have some rough ends for it's, the original budget or the original <coughs> financial analysis showed the numbers when we were looking at them mm -hmm. reflected that we were going to be building that out and that isn't typical the tenant would be involved it was so. i think it was always shell commercial oh, was it? Okay. yeah yeah and My it mistake. was i think it was um what two point it was like 2.4 so outside show. and then okay. 800 um, the brick color i mean i think we need to be really really careful here I, and i know this is a photo rendering and 231 doesn't look like that kind of brown yeah um but for such a significant presence there needs to be probably extremely scrupulous 
Oh, we're uh, going to be looking at samples. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, and we did. They have, to get their, they have to look at historic zoning has to approve it. Do like yeah. a COA. Mm -hmm. They have to go, I guess. So there's one more review of the actual materials. Yeah. And, and I know they've kind of already done that. No, but, we, no. in phase three, we're going to be bringing brick sample boards, right, which we're going to look at the historic courthouse in 231 and find an in-between brick. But we do have in the budget the wood mold brick that's on 231, which is that nicer solid yeah. brick mm -hmm. um, that we selected. Um, actually, it's very similar to Dr. McPhail's office oh, that brick yeah. um so that's where so it's going to kind of evolve and this will be kind of the blending color of the brick. Perfect. So that's yeah the that's important I yeah. just, and yeah. we'll bring that to the board as well oh, yes. it's not just going to go to uh, design review you'll Correct. see it as well just because the lighter yeah. and again this yeah. is a rendering i understand that yeah. but the lighter it get the lighter it gets it the less the more new it looks and the yes. more it yeah. can stick out so it'll have some yeah. color variation for sure there's a green roof still um, there's a yeah, rooftop or terrace rooftop is what terrace. we refer to. <laughs> but it's not really going to be a green roof. <laughs> Correct. And it's okay. it's okay. small. Is it usable? It is small. I is think it, it terrace. It, is actually fantastic. we do have it labeled green roof, but it's more of a terrace right. and it overlooks that courtyard. Make sure. make sure the green roof didn't slip back in. Not that I have anything <laughs> against green roofs, but um, yeah. the terrace I think will be a very usable yeah. and I'm sure there'll be planting, you know, in planters and that kind of thing. Um there is a lot of room for community space. And I, I mean, I, get, I, th I think we're going to go into value engineering, and some would say we've already value engineered this. <laughs> we're working in, at, you know, with the owner's rep uh, process. And um, so I, I hope while I'm, uh, you know, excited to move forward, I think that uh, as a board, we decided to, to make that, um, to go, go down that process of evaluating if an owner's rep and value engineering outside services uh, might be helpful for us from a, a you know, a, a, for our review. And so, um, we don't have, we haven't made that selection yet. Correct. Um, but I don't want us to get out too far ahead. So I think we've discussed and with Vernon and others that, uh, that we're going to try to time this process right with that, because, uh, I do think there, there still could be some additional, um, you know, considerations because at the end of the day, it's, you know, yeah, I love it. It's great. Yeah, we don't costs, we don't have a meeting know. where we don't discuss value engineering. Oh, yeah. I know. It's just so <laughs> so we are constantly thinking about that amongst our team. I want you to have confidence in that we're not gilding the lily here. We're we're really I trying understand. to be. And it it really um, just comes down to dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, and you can value engineer and wring the water out of it, and it still be too expensive, mm -hmm. or not you know or whatever. I mean that's that's the thing is what we've got to think about. Um, I'm not saying that this that's what this is, right. but as as to be prudent in our role, mm -hmm. you can take the, you know, again, you can, uh, but at the end of the day, we, we, we have, you know, a budget and we <coughs> want to stay at or under what we've discussed. Um, other than that, I think, I think it's fantastic. Oh, on the mm -hmm. square, the, um, the, you know, we, you know, we, we kind of went away from a plaza, but it turns out we're getting a plaza, which is good, uh, I guess. We just need to, mm -hmm. I, I think about that corner uh, in considering tree plantings or a planting area, because that right there, you're missing, I think we're missing, even from those uh, balusters, there's still mm -hmm. some space. Is that the existing balusters, the, the existing ones or those new ones? New ones. These are all new, and we're going to be looking at Because I think it would be out further, mm -hmm. wouldn't the ones now? currently would be kind of towards us in the photo or not no this this comes yeah. do you see the 231 courtyard that's where that's where you can see the ramp up the accessible okay. ramp do you see that at yes. the 231 courtyard left of the white steps yeah but we we have we are we need to further refine this corner plaza and we're going to be looking at the shape of it again and bringing back i'm really thinking like ideas. in terms of looking at the other corners of the square mm -hmm. there's some sort of tree planting Mm -hmm. uh, I think that adds to the character of the square having mm -hmm. those those trees. Okay. Um, it, all all th other three part corners of the square have have have, have trees. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't want it to look so hard. I don't want it to be so hard looking. I'm not saying we need to make this like you know a garden, but um, <laughs> but but maybe a tree or a you know something that. Sure over time would grow and, and, and soften that whole corner. I agree. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, think about that. I think that's part of that streetscape refinement that Anna Ruth talked about Perfect. along Third Avenue mm-hmm. that will come back and the, the context of the other four corners is clearly important because this this is about completing the square. Yep. So we'll, and we'll definitely look at that. When will we get, thank you, that's, all, that's great. When will we get the park comments from the public? We'll be bringing that back at a future okay. meeting because it is, it's really great feedback. A lot of different design ideas and we received 80 different photographs of inspiration oh, wow. park examples right. in the community. So we want to bring Good. all of those back. I don't have a specific <coughs> date for well, you Well, that's yet. fine. I, and I don't know, are we going to wrap that into this project? I mean, that's going to kind of all happen at the same time. Okay. All right, thank you. Those results are going to play into a concept that the consultant team will bring together based on that feedback and bring that back as one of the options for uh, your consideration. Thank, thank you. you. Alderman Peterson. Thank you for a wonderful presenting this. Uh, one of the things that I had said whenever... Let me turn that on. <laughs> uh, that I had said some time ago, maybe six months ago or something, whenever I responded to uh, to something, I was asking about uh, the underground parking garage, and I was I was speaking <laughs> to Mr. Stuggy about the the night of the uh, Christmas tree lighting when nobody could find parking places, mm-hmm. not at all. Not the shovel the men. Uh, that's right. So, but the other thing that I was wondering is. You know, the the underground parking garage is going to be $10 million, is it not? That's that's the last number I heard on it. Um, Well, we're we're in the process of getting an independent cost estimate to um, compare the numbers that we have. So Mm -hmm. um, we're not really talking about the cost tonight, but we will definitely be giving you that breakdown um, Mm -hmm. when we review the cost estimates with you guys in February. So we might want to discuss that then um, for cost implications and save that for that conversation. And it it, it doubles as a parking garage and really the foundation and platform for the development above. So it's got some building costs that are part of its cost compared to just a typical you know, uh, independent parking garage, if you will. So mm-hmm. we can maybe help under help differentiate that a little that bit and that, and, and when we bring that back to you. And it creates the whole park is above the parking garage, which makes it pad ready for future square footage to be added to City Hall if that's ever needed. If the park goes away oh, or if you need to add more important. building, mm-hmm. you've got a slab there. So it's ultimate flexibility and growth for City Hall if we... Mm-hmm since we're looking at ways to decrease the city hall currently. That's a hundred years old idea. Yeah. yeah. But 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 again mm-hmm. I, I'm just saying that 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 parking underground parking though is really going to be for uh, uh, people who work for the city. Well, and and there's there's been uh, discussions of like either a valet surface or opening it up to public use for the tree lighting when staff is not in the building working. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there's there's other ideas being explored for the use of that. So it's really- So you could look at it for festivals, yeah. tree lighting, where there's a clear time where we're not fully utilizing it, that we could find a way to make that publicly mm-hmm. accessible or add to the event parking mm-hmm. well, volume. I, we're I designing was... to try to allow for those things, yeah. and then it becomes just an operational decision so mm-hmm. that you have the, the ability to open that up and and use it as you need to. Well, though that's not the only time whenever right. people have a problem finding mm-hmm. parking. Oh, not absolutely. at all. It's not all just. All the time. I mean, all the time, really. And so, you know, whenever we were talking about the park at the end, and you, you just mm-hmm. mentioned something like that, I, I, I was saying, can we just put a parking garage um, you know that uh, that during the the week or something like that would only be for for uh, uh, people who work here, but then it would be open, or or even it would have enough uh, you know spaces there to be useful so much of the time, not just for special we, events or anything. We actually way back in phase one. Over many years ago, we studied um, putting an above-ground parking garage because mm-hmm. that was part of the initial right. um, RFQ. 
they're really, once you get the square footage of the building along with the zoning requirements for parking garages, because we can't build the oh, parking garages like, like the Second Avenue anymore, according oh, to oh, the really? zoning ordinance. Oh, really? So so our zoning ordinance would, would require... Mm -hmm. uh, Liner, because, you know, I mean, on this garage. important quadrant of the square, you know, the consideration of having two above-ground parking garages flanking City Hall, too, is, is a aesthetic consideration and a... Um, but there really was not enough room to get a functional above grade parking garage and city hall on this site. So that's why it went underground. Mm. And we have studies of that that mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll, mm -hmm. we'll be, we can share. Well, I, I would like to see those because, as I say, that would be an obvious, you know, every day of, of every week, not just for special times. And as I say, I've had people say to me that live here that say, I don't want to go to downtown because I can't ever find a place. To, well, wait. And as, as I've been told, a place to park free. Free, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to make that clarification. Because we actually did do a parking study just in the last year that showed us the real scarcity is the free parking. Oh. When you look at paid parking lots, there's, there's throughout the day, oh, wow. there is capacity. Yeah. Uh, you look at Harpeth Square. It's significant capacity available there, but then the pay surface lots also have capacity throughout the day. It's when we look at 2nd and 4th Avenue, mm -hmm. we look at those free mm -hmm. spaces, mm -hmm. that that becomes the, the premium is getting those. So um, it's just a, a shift that has happened in over the last five years in particular that what had been free surface lots are now paid surface lots, and uh, everybody still is, as I think we all would, it, prioritizing that free space over that paid space. Mm -hmm. uh, go, go, I, ahead, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say something. Back off your parking thing. Um, and and you bring up a legitimate concern, Anne. But this is City Hall. We're going to build a parking garage. It's part of the structure. It's part of the uh, foundation of that structure as well. Uh, we're there. I think the parking issue that you bring up is a legitimate one. It's for an entire conversation this board has got to have, and I just want to inj inject that. We have got to talk about another parking garage downtown. Regardless of what we do here, we're doing this. This is happening. We're going to have this parking garage. Yes, it is. And uh, thank you. And um, I think that uh, outside of this discussion, I don't want us to get tied up with parking because this is already the way it's going to be because of the foundation and everything. But just FYI, I think we're going to have to uh, all come together as a board and start talking about another parking structure somewhere in downtown. Or in Peterson County. Well, go, 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 if you want to say something well, about that, on the please. Parking, on the parking, there's a real quick that. comment uh, is that I heard there was kind of some well, it may be open valet for public, da, 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 like I expect that if it is not business hours, mm -hmm. that this parking deck should be built so that the public can use it freely. Yeah. I mean, I think that's probably everyone's, I mean, I know there's like security and access control mm -hmm. issues, and I think we just mm -hmm. need to go ahead and design those in mm -hmm. there, because if we're going to build this garage, and it's not work hours, uh, we need to make sure that the access controls are in place as mm -hmm. we build it, so that we can right. freely leave, open it to the public uh, cameras down there for security, lighting, like whatever we have to have. Absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. But Absolutely. if we're going to build a, this 200 space lot, I, I really feel like we it would be prudent for us to make sure that we build it so that it can be opened and opened yeah. without operational issue. Mm -hmm. and, so. and when people enter that garage, they can be noted of what car is entering that garage. Yeah, we already have, we have the cameras the planned for yeah, the yeah, license plates and all that. And yeah, so mm -hmm. totally with uh, all yeah. the bag and all that. Yeah, we have it incorporated in the design. It just becomes an operational yeah. decision with the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means that during the time, during the daytime, whenever uh, weekday daytime, mm -hmm. whenever uh, people are here, uh, I mean the uh, employees are here. How is it going to be noted that only they are allowed to come in? Now, what I'm trying to say mm -hmm. is, how can you know if people are think they can park here on the weekends or something, then they right. might think, oh, let's it's, just park here. <laughs> it'll be access controlled with a card key. With a card? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then we're saying that 
during the other time, so. You can turn that off. The gate can, can come up and, yeah. and public access. So yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's right. So the, so the gate comes up and stays up. The one thing we have left off here is a place for the farmers to come in and play checkers. <laughs> I mean, we, 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 there's a, we, there's a we life put, size checkerboard image. We have in the put park everything today. else in here. I don't know how we missed that. We're taking notes. Yeah. We're putting one in Please the park with your name uh, on it. Are we still at 99 million for this? Well, you're, you're, as uh, Anna Ruth said, you're going to get an updated cost estimate in February. What we're carrying in the CIP is, I think, $9,900 something it's like that. Let's just be clear. Yeah. Sticks and bricks. Yeah. Sticks and bricks are not $99 million. No. So, okay. No, that's the all-in that's the all all in everything in. cost. Sticks and bricks. Okay, yeah. that, Every day. But it, it doesn't matter whether it's on. sticks and bricks or $44 million yeah. and something else is something else. Yeah. The top line or the bottom line is $99 million, 91,000 square feet on this particular piece of property here is what we're looking at. And I'm still, I, I'm still, a, well, I'm not confused. Well, I am. If, you've, if you're doing a 200 space garage and you probably have right now, oh, I haven't been up on the second and third floor of Second Avenue, you've got, what, 50 city cars over that park now? I mean, do you? I mean, do, I, mean, I think it's yeah. less than that now. You think yeah. it's less than yeah. that now? Yeah. So and then we that, got employee so parking. They're, so they're coming in to this 200 <coughs> place. Those city vehicles will be coming into this. You got 210 employees. Mm -hmm. I would assume most of them probably drive in. Do mm -hmm. they not? Mm -hmm. That doesn't. That doesn't. That doesn't jive. I mean, if you got 200 cars coming in for employees and 50 or 40 or 50 city vehicles that are looking at it being parked into a 200 space garage, those numbers don't tally up. And you're giving up the parking spaces along what the, mm -hmm. where the pull-in on right. the other mm -hmm. end where the Sears building. The surface mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. You're giving those Thank up. You. So can, am I, can you, ex, can you help me out? Well, I'll, I'll say a little something then I'll hand off to you, but uh, you know, you have, 200 spaces in this garage, but you have a net, I think around 135, right. something like that. So you are lo losing those surface yep. spaces. Uh, but with the key card access, we can control both city vehicles and employees that come in there. And so, you know, you'll, you'll end up with a net benefit in terms of space that's, that's freed up in Second Avenue. And that's that 135 that we're talking about. So you'll still, you will still probably have some employees, some traffic in and out of that Second Avenue, but the primary parking source for both city vehicles and employees will be that subsurface parking. But the purpose of that garage was to free that up so that we would have free parking in the Second Avenue garage. Well, the, which it, the, which the, it does. It doesn't it does, do it. it, it the garage, there's a net of 135. Okay. And the garage is the full extent of the site. So essentially, it's as many parking spaces as you can fit on that site underground in one level of underground park. Well, don't make them too tight because I can't get my truck. Oh, yeah. We've heard that. <laughs> That's the second thing. We have factored in the truck. We've heard about that. A checkerboard that. for the farmers and a wide enough parking yeah. spot <laughs> for Mr. Baggett's truck and my truck. They don't go in real narrow you know, spaces. <laughs> we'll get your, you know, we'll get a tape measure out. <laughs> well, I hate to follow uh, yeah. farmers checkers, so I'll just make this one comment, which is, uh, uh, I really appreciate tucking in the commercial piece. I actually think it made the inside of the, the main city hall building better. I think it actually, the design better. I think I think moving things over really worked. Um, I think it looks beautiful. I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, I know more to come, but um, it really does change. I mean, if you just were to look at those pictures and then walk outside right now and look up and down that Third Avenue, and I mean, what a great difference it's gonna be um, in the city. So anyway, well done. And, Eric. Two, Thank two you. couple things to just close out. Oh, oh go, ahead. go ahead. I was going to say uh, one more thing. I, I'm still not exactly sure on, on uh, I guess it's 10, you know, how the, the setup on that. Because I, I you yeah, know, where, where I am wish I standing? I had, where yeah, I, I wish I had a site plan. <coughs> so, um, so you see the, the tower of the Second Avenue parking garage on the right? Okay. You see the, that? The right oh, the, okay. okay. So right. that alley, you know the alley that you um, drive in off of 2nd Avenue? Mm -hmm. The entrance to the parking garage, which is in the foreground of this on the left, lines up with that alley. So you go straight, oh, right. down, the, straight down the ramp from that alley. So you're standing right on the other side of that 
alley. D- does that help in the center of the alley, looking back towards kind of the behind full to, light theater, looking towards so it's a straight yeah. shot from Second yeah. Avenue? You don't have to come in and jog to get to the parking garage. It's, it's you drive along the Second Avenue, the end of the Second Avenue garage, straight in, straight, straight in, in straight down, mm-hmm. and so straight out. So it's easy, straight out, and, and then straight out to church, too, on the other end of the, the other alley. The, the one running well, perpendicular, the main. Thank yes. you. Yes, sorry. Will there be any improvements to church and the entrance and exit since so you're the, going to be parking 200 people? Yeah, in there's this a spot? separate church street streetscape project going on, and we're working with that team to coordinate the on street parking and the community park and all of that. So we're, we're working with that team. Second Avenue, as y'all look at that, I'm sure engineering is something this, but. Um, the turn uh, there could be some turn lane situations or some because with that the old drop the old drop box mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind right. of yep. thing <laughs> but um i don't know improve because there will be a lot of people probably mm-hmm. in and out there so maybe that street yes. could be improved so i have two things one is specific i want the design team to address that i've heard this question but the board didn't ask it tonight we've changed the boardroom from a two floor to a one floor. Talk a little bit about the aesthetic of that and how that can still accommodate. It's, it's going to be a little larger boardroom, but how will that work without the extra you know, space in terms of ceiling height? So let me go back. Hang on. Let me. Um, so I think we talked about in the meeting before last the boardroom size. So compared to this boardroom, it's about one and a half times the distance in each direction, the new boardroom is one and a half times the size of that. So if you look at this room, that's that's a relational dimension that I can give you. Um, the current is about 54 feet, and the proposed is about 76 feet. Okay, um, the ceiling height. You know, before we had a double height um, ceiling with without IT above it. Um, we've worked with the structural engineer to change the second floor structure first to get a clear span across this boardroom so there's no columns in the space. Um, and then to avoid really deep beams that would um, affect the ceiling height, uh, we've done a concrete a, um, pan joist clear span system so there's no columns and it's a shallow structure. So we, we're aiming for a 12 foot ceiling height in the boardroom, which this one's 11. So you got a foot more than this. Thank you for that. I, just, mm-hmm. that. I had heard that question before. I want to make sure folks know how that still can be really good functional space. Okay, so the other thing I just want to close out, it was touched on at the beginning. Our plan is to bring back to you at work session, uh, I think at February on February 13th, that uh, the two opinions of cost to give you that as context. And the, also that will also be an initiation of the discussion around moving into the, the next phase, which would be final design and the bid document production. So it's really that next really um, critical st- step in terms of your decision and guidance there. So that will also start that discussion again at work session uh, and see where you want to go with that element. Uh, one of the other things we're looking at that I, I, I'm not sure exactly when the timing will be on this, but we do want to talk to you about um, some of the, the approach in terms of the the construction um, management and, and strategy there. So there may be some things there that we want to talk through with you. Uh, it may have a little bit of a connection to the owner, owner's rep uh, piece, but uh, you know, there's construction manager at risk. There's some other things that you can look at that, that present some opportunities for you to manage cost and shift some risk around the project there. But there's pros and cons with everything. So that's something we will at some point want to address with you because that's a a part of the strategy of delivering, looking at budget, but also looking at time because time affects that budget too. The quicker we can deliver, there are savings involved because there's a lot of inflationary costs when you look at the time period involved. So those are all pieces that we're trying to manage along with giving you a good opinion of cost. So... um, that's just sort of a preview of coming attractions, but that's what's coming next, and that's the decision that's on the horizon for you once we give you that opinion of costs and walk through these other elements is moving into the, the final design piece. So just just to make a month from today, you're going to be able to come back in here and say this is what we believe to be close to the final cost of this project. from Yeah, from two different cost estimators. Okay. Yes. Because I want to say, you know, when we're talking about CIP and they're saying all of these 
uh, cost have gone up mm -hmm. enormously. Mm -hmm. And and so to think that that's not going to be the case. Well, we've been this? factoring inflationary costs in this project pretty regularly along the way. So when we've done different components, we've updated those costs. So it's not going to be maybe as dramatic as you saw in some of the projects that are comparing a you know, a 2018, 2019 cost estimate to what we're seeing now in an updated 10 year plan, it's gonna be a little more current. So that that probably won't be as dr dramatic as we've seen in the CIP as a whole. So. Ready to move on? That's right. Thank you. That's right. Well, right. this, well, wait a minute. This project is no different from any other project, Bill, if you go, go have, go, going to have to pay for it because this building is escalating at, a, at an inflationary level, sure. but so is pavement and so mm -hmm. is a road and so is everything else. So, you know, it doesn't do... Yeah, all I'm saying yeah. is we've updated that cost with the, yeah. the number you're looking at a little more recently than some of the other projects. Yeah. So. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Item number two. Consideration of Resolution 2023-83, a resolution to affirm compliance with federal Title VI regulations. Mr. Stuckey. Yeah, this is uh, something we do every year. It just affirms our compliance with civil rights and other non-discriminatory uh, elements of, of federal law and federal, federal regulations and keeps us in play with using federal dollars on various projects. So just, just something we do every year. It's on both agendas. Any questions? Next item, number three, consideration of resolution 2023-82, a resolution acknowledging the letter of agreement between the Tennessee Main Street Program and the Downtown Franklin Association. This is also something we do every year. Uh, it's part of affirming the city's support for our downtown being part of the Main Street Program. And so they, they need to see that from the local government that we are supportive and uh, acknowledge that we're, we're part of that. Any discussion? Okay, number four, consideration of resolution 2023-68, a resolution declaring property at 15 Lee Court as surplus property. Hello, Michelle. Hi there. Um, so this is a property that was, um, that was, at, it used to have a pump station on it. So I, before my time, and I think it was Many even years ago. <laughs> before Hilti's time. So pretty much when dinosaurs roam the earth, right? <laughs> 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 there was, <is> he? <laughs> Shortly um, after the Battle of Franklin. Yeah, right. <laughs> there, used, there used to be a pump station here, and then obviously it's been changed over to gravity. We no longer need this. The um, ad adjacent homeowner maintains this by mowing, you know, mowing this area. It has for years. It has for years, <laughs> yeah. So we're just simply turning it over to them um, officially. We don't have any intent for ever using this again. So where did the water, where was the water coming from that we were pumping? That's, it was. That it used to be a. System? It used to be a sewer pump station. Okay. Yeah. All right. So no, yeah, no longer needed. So and all the property owner need will need to do is record the updated. Uh, yeah, and that's been and that's gone over with them, and yeah. they're okay with that. So he's he's going. In this case, it's one property owner. Owner. Sometimes we split it between adjacent property owners, but only one is interested. Yeah, I, I miss so. I misspoke to you initially. Yeah. <laughs> is that right? Oh, is that no? You know, no, you're right. It's, okay. just, it's one. Okay. It's okay. the adjacent does, one, yeah. Okay. Does that add value to his property? I think, a, I think a small amount. I think it's less than, it's 0.08 acres. So I'm not sure it's adding. <laughs> yeah. 0 0.08. 08. Yeah. <laughs> is, there, is there any... Uh, any infrastructure or anything that still needs to be removed? Or it's all been, it's all been abandoned, yeah. So it's all underground, um, been abandoned. I guess if they were ever to build something on there, we would need to, you know, do that. But They would need to do that. They, they would need to do that work, yeah. Because it's, okay. it's their property now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number five, consideration of certificate of compliance for retail liquor license for St. Goose LLC, DBA St. Goose, located at 134 Second Avenue North, Suite 104, Franklin, Tennessee, managing agent and sole shareholder, Caitlin Hamm. Yes, hi. This is a current uh, liquor license that you have already in uh, play. There are many uh, owners previously. It's just going down to one of one of the other previous owners. So several are stepping aside. One is maintaining on that one. All right. Number six, item number six, consideration of certificate of compliance for retail liquor license for West Main Street Liquors, located at 1326 West Main Street Number 110, Franklin, Tennessee, managing agent and owner, Maria G. Rodriguez. 
Yes, this is, an, again, another existing license. It's being passed from one family member to another. All right, number seven, discussion regarding the capital investment plan emergency services. So our, our team is coming up here. This is really closing out the projects we've submitted to you. There have been a total of 73 projects submitted in the capital investment program for our 10-year plan. Uh, we've reviewed that, uh, and this is the last group, and, and, and deals with the emergency services component. And then after this, we'll move into uh, stepping back a little bit and walking through uh, some elements of the financial model that we didn't fully get to talk through last meeting. So take it away, Paul and team. So same, so same exact format. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Chief Johnson to go through his projects. So right now we have... It says eight, it's actually nine projects in the emergency services category. And uh, I'm gonna let him walk you through. All right, good evening. Appreciate your time to uh, look at some of our projects. As we move forward into the future, we have a, a couple of new fire halls that we are wanting to put on your radar. Though we don't know, though we don't know exactly where they will be, we wanna make sure that growth and development through growth and development that we are prepared for them. So we've got in here a station nine and station 10. Uh, we anticipate one going out Murfreesboro Road East as that develops and gets sewer. And we're looking at another one around the Southeast uh, Park, uh, Lockwood Glen. We've identified a little bit of a coverage area there. And so we're looking at different options on a station location to where we can leverage the best response to the citizens of that area. Uh, station three, uh, this is something that I brought up last year. Uh, station three is our oldest fire station. And uh, we've uh, looked at the footprint and the building design and we have enough property to build a fire station seven or eight on there. That would encompass Williamson Health as one of our partners. Uh, we would add a second story to it to move some of our downtown administrative offices to that location. Uh, freeing them up more space in City Hall. Uh, as we continue to grow, we feel like this could be another long-term station to deal with the growth and development in the Cool Springs area and also increase response times uh, of uh, EMS that would partner with us, such as Station 7. Uh, our current training center, we're reaching 20 years old. And uh, we, we know that we need to start doing some improvements. So as we look into the future, uh, we want to look at different options of maybe expanding the training center and adding some upgrades. Uh, we have it capped at about 4.5 million at this time. Uh, we think we may be able to come in that, under that just a little bit, but uh, we're going to begin, begin doing studies this year. So next year when we come back, we will have uh, a more definitive price and and plan for that facility or for that footprint. Question. On yes, ma'am. Would that be at the same uh, yes, location? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. So safe rooms, uh, station seven and station eight. Uh, during their initial design and development. Uh, we uh, established shelters inside the fire stations that could withstand an F5 tornado. Uh, we see a need to provide the same type of coverage to our existing stations. And so this project here uh, is a total cost of 900000 That's going to take care of the seven remaining areas. Uh, we can either do this through phases or all at once. But this will uh, provide our uh, personnel uh, a secure location in the event of uh, severe weather or tornado. Yes, ma'am. 900000 covers what? That's the installation, purchase, and basically turnkey out the door. Of each one? No, for a total, each, for all the fire stations. That's what I thought you said. Yes, ma'am. Wow, all encompassing. That can't be right. Okay. Good. <laughs> and this is, right. this is one, if we can, can do choose to phase in, might be something that could be absorbed in the operating budget. So that's something yeah. we'll consider as we're looking you, at that as well. You might want to do that tomorrow. <laughs> That, right, but trust that, me. That, that's a darn good price. <laughs> that is. That is. That's, that's a really, really price. bottom rock price from what I'm looking at because I, I actually knew of something about these. So it's like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? And that's well, why we wanted to put this in here, just kind of put it on your radar because it, it's an option with Station 3. If we're going to 
invest the money for the redesign and uh, redevelopment of Station 3, then we wouldn't have to invest that money into it. And as you'll see, when we get over here, we got Station 2 that we, we are looking at doing some redesign as well. So when these are ordered, do they come as is and you just install them? Uh, from what they, I understand they is, yeah. They, they install them, the people we buy them from? The I'm not sure if it's an owner. I don't know if it's an owner install or a vendor you install. You might want to check that yeah. out. Well, well, Brad will be working with us. there might be an extra cost in that. Right. Um, and see if that cost is filtered in on that or if it's an extra cost. Yes, ma'am. All right, thanks. All right, I'm going to let Andy explain this one here. Thank you, Chief. Uh, this item is the proposed... Uh, safety city or safety village and this is something that the city's recognized that in the future we need to be addressing from a Franklin potentially Williamson County perspective and also through public and private partnerships to educate the children in our community currently we use a 20 year old model that involves a mobile home basically the RV that gets towed from school to school for very short classes and several other communities Many of them in Texas have developed the safety city where they address lots of topics beyond fire prevention. And so it might include bicycle safety, uh, car seat and seat belt safety, uh, bicycle, um, many other topics that we could all have in one location on a miniature scale. So it's interactive and very much a learning environment and also have auditorium type space to have more public meetings and really the sky is the limit on this type of concept but it's important for us to put it on our long-term radar of how might how important is this and how might we accomplish it okay. does Knoxville oh yeah, I'll bring back to it. go ahead does Knoxville I think <clears throat> Knoxville may have one of these or some Knox County maybe I don't I, they recent, may I think I, there's several looked, cities and other places that have tried this and they do each of them do it a little bit different way and it depends on how much space they have and then depending on the partnerships that they may um, if they have large corporate sponsors in the area to help offset the cost and yeah I'd be curious to learn more about the details of this because I do think it'd be fantastic and in, um, in the program as we, we think about our parks master plan and reprogramming various areas of our park system and, and, and I guess naturally that's probably where this kind of thing would go right I would I would think it would be in a or anyway the details would be interesting on this and I know we may not be able to go into them now but um, in the footprint uh, but that it would be uh, yeah I'd be interested to see because I do think there's public private partnership opportunities and as a father of three young children uh, who have been into the mobile home the <laughs> that is truly mobile or it does go around to schools uh, and the various fire, you know, education, you know, things that happen in our school systems, I do think that it's an um, important um, thing for us to think about. I think I'd be curious to refine that and understand even maybe phases of this we could do. There's, you know, you talked about an auditorium and a, maybe that's a longer term phase. Uh, we're about to build a fantastic auditorium here on City Hall that maybe there could be some, but uh, some of those classes in the community that those could be in. But maybe like a phased approach where we did the street, you know, I don't know. So phasing of this, because um, the sooner we get some of that, I think it'd be fantastic for the kids. But yeah, I'm, I'm interested. I see that it's a two star, but I think if manipulated and maybe thought through and uh, maybe a phased approach, um, maybe could get get some higher stars on there and and i think probably i think the community would absolutely support this um but we just i'm, I'm curious about more details on that Alderman mm -hmm. Potts. thank you sir um so love the idea yeah my kids have done the trailer as well it's great you know and uh, after 20 years i can see it's going to need the update um I, I am curious though is there an opportunity for us to partner with franklin police and to because when you talk about the auditorium and you talk about the bike piece i know that they have safety bike programs bike registration programs we've got all these different pieces is there an opportunity for our emergency responder uh, all of our emergency responders to be reflected possibly in this yes i would think so and, and including those public private ones as well for funding um, we've also talked in years past about even spreading out further whether it's um, water and environmental issues and helping people understand how all of the city government pieces play into their quality of life and not only just the safety piece. 
Yeah, I, I think this is a great idea. Um, I love, I can visualize the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, different schools coming in, CPR certification, learning all the safety things that are needed. So, I, yeah, I, I agree. I think if this is a, a partnered approach and to Alderman Baggett's uh, piece, if it's tiered and we can grow it out over several years, I think it'd be great. I'm back. I know we don't, this is a, just thinking outside the box, this should also, I think, might be a good county city joint project um, because of the, you know, we would want to make sure that if we're using our, you know, I'm, there's all the details that have to be worked out. So I get it. <laughs> but I think, you know, when you think about, you don't want to have two of these in one community, right? Or not that they are even thinking about doing something like this, but maybe they are. Uh, and so I think just, I, I don't know, I think there's something here that could get this bumped up. But, and maybe that's something we can do. Uh, is, is or y'all can interface with the county to see if that's something and Eric could, is even on the radar or we could talk to our com commissioners but I do think there'd be some and maybe some school property you think about county school system property or Franklin special property un underused property where something like this could go so I, I, I love this I think this is great uh, I'd also along the same line since he just mentioned uh, the county to see if there was any state partnership uh, with the State Troopers Association and see if there's any grant money that might be available for education through that. Alderman Berger. Yes, Sorry, I was just going to ask you if, if, uh, if you have or will you be looking into grants for this? Yes, ma'am. We will really be looking at opportunities. All right. And, and um, there was, um, there is a safety program uh, safety Village or something in Central Florida. I don't know if you're aware of that one, but you might want to look into that. It's Central Florida, and they do a really good job down there um, of that. But I'm the person, I'm the one that always like, okay, on the back of my head, I'm thinking all the time, corporate partnerships, corporate partnerships for this. This is a perfect thing to have corporate partnerships mm -hmm. for naming rights, for the auditorium, things of that nature. Sign me up. I'll help you. I'm, I'm very interested in this uh, because um, we need this, and I agree. I forget what one of you all said about partnering with the police officers and the police department. I think there would be um, an opportunity if we could get a, um, an auditorium of some sort where we could put uh, both programs together, where the officers could come in and train children on, on different aspects of all the things that kids face today that we have a lot of things that just just the just the pure uh, idea of, of teaching children to be aware because everybody's doing different things and they're on their phones they're on their cell adults children everybody they're not aware we have unaware drivers we have unaware walkers people I saw one guy just bump into the pole downtown a couple weeks ago because he was on his cell phone and and Children need all this, and um, I'm thinking we could partner together a little bit on that as well. It, it would be uh, something you all would do, but maybe partner on that. And we, we can really look at some corporate partnerships and community buy-in. We need to talk to the chamber on this because their companies that are chamber members need to be, we need to be alerting the chamber on this. And we need to be working with the chamber and their businesses as well. I'm very interested, and I'd be glad to help on that. Yes, okay. sir. We probably need to move the pole. Ultimate Caesar. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. Okay, so uh, as we were talking about earlier, I said we'd have something out here for Station 2. Station 2 was originally designed to have a, an addition in the back. Uh, and so we were looking at doing uh, that addition that's going to help us with some of our storage issues. Uh, as our department continues to grow, we're continually looking for space uh, to uh, basically a smaller warehouse, and this would fit the need, especially as we transition you know, through New City Hall. This will give us some space that we would need in order to, to house some of our things. Uh, we already have the design of it. Uh, Brad Wilson has already looked at it. Don't see any issues, but we're gonna be asking for the architectural design just to see about moving forward with this project uh, in this upcoming budget year. 
on, on this one in particular, Chief, you're yes. thinking design's 150 and finished product is a half? I think that's what we think because we already have part of the design okay. and, um, as we move forward. Brad called me before the meeting. He said this is probably closer to a million, so that's we will update this when you go to vote okay. on it. Okay. Um, Brad has spoken. <laughs> and that, and not in, inflation's design, really bad, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. As we sit and talk, <laughs> You better build this one quick, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just need the approval. <laughs> okay, and this is one that I'm, I'm very excited about. This is a, a multiple departments within the city working together for a common uh, goal of our citizen and public safety. Uh, I'm just fortunate to be able to sit here with Paul and Jason here tonight as they explain that because this technology is going to get way above my head. <laughs> so... I'll start off and then turn it over to Jason. Jason's really the one that brought this kind of opportunity to us. We Typically, we had budgeted around $80,000 in the annual budget to upgrade our emergency preemption system. So it's a system that changes the signal to green so that the vehicle, the fire trucks can get to where they need to be. Um, the fire department wasn't thrilled with what we were doing and the technology we were using. So we took a step back and we found another product, which we're going to try to implement through the annual operating budget between the three departments. We think that's feasible. Uh, so this project will actually end up getting moved over to transportation long term. Uh, but the goal is, and there's a big push at the federal level, uh, to do connected vehicles to everything. So talking to the signals, talking to cell phones, talking to the preemption system. And I'll let Jason talk a little bit about the technology that he's found. And ultimately, um, we're actively working on grants. This is this is really big with FHWA right now, so we think that it has the potential to get 100% federally funded, but we still want to share it with you and uh, get you caught up to speed on it. It's good to be with you tonight. Uh, I, I'm not at the table very much, so I'm, I'm happy to be up here. Um, so I, I'm going to back up a little bit, and, and this goes back to really uh, when when Eric started, and, and we've been very fortunate to have the infrastructure to do what we do across the city with operations for all departments. Um, to, to touch on that a little bit, fiber is what I'm referring to. So we, we, we completely own and operate uh, the fiber that connects and allows us to, to operate uh, daily. Um, and, and thank you to the board for allowing that to happen. Um, so with that being said, we're, we're gonna layer this technology, which is the EVP. Uh, luckily, Chief Johnson and the fire department would get that benefit first and foremost with that. Um, following up with that is, as Paul said, from the traffic's team, as you know, we, we have no traffic issues in Franklin. Um, <laughs> with, uh, with, with this edge technology, it's called edge intelligence that, that runs on top of our network and really gives Paul and his traffic team um, the real time ability to analyze this data that, that, that we get to capture from the connected vehicles per se. So, so it gives them the tools to, to look at this at a very granular and detailed level to, to improve it, you know, improve it, you know, in small chunks, but it's in the big picture, it will make a huge difference. And we're working with some very, uh, uh, very big uh, vendors as, as far as Cisco systems, some of their traffic engineers and their technology, and we're incorporating um, that technology into what we're trying to do here. So, um, you know, and with that being said, uh, fire will benefit, but the, the infrastructure shouldn't limit the need just to fire. So we'll look at helping address, you know, other traffic priorities, congestion, pedestrian safety, um, and, and all other departments as well, so. I thought we already had these. I guess I'll stop sitting at intersections flashing my lights. I, I, I thought it worked. I guess it doesn't. We do have some. Oh. We do have some. Well, maybe I am working it. Well. I don't know. Sorry, go ahead. But, but this would layer on top and and actually enable this uh, preemption at all 130 intersections. So. That completes emergency services, unless you have questions. One, maybe a, not maybe not a question or comment. Um, I think it would be significant to be able to tie in the Mallory Station Road improvements that you want to do on that fire station there with what we're looking at. We just spent an hour on. 
because we're talking about moving some personnel. We're talking about probably needing, and you're not going to do anything different from City Hall. But you, but other than there might be a few less cars parked, there might be a few less uh, uh, apparatus or something other like that. But the size and whatever we're doing here is not going to be affected. But I really think that that needs to go forward on what we're looking at on that. And it's you've got it down here at ten ten and a half million four star project. So I'm not sure where you guys are on that. But I'm saying from my standpoint. I think that's one of the more significant projects that you've got on here. Yes, sir, and I agree. And we can get those numbers to you about if we were to relocate the impact that it would have on vehicles as well as personnel. Uh, but as I said, Station 3 is our oldest station, and I think it's time that we we did something different there and uh, and looking to incorporate a partnership with Williamson Health uh, will be very beneficial to the community. When you do that, don't they have do they have some kind of cost share in their bay? Uh, yes, sir. They do. We sign a contract, and then they they'll do a cost share. Basically, whatever their uh, construction costs are, they will absorb, and then the sharing comes in utilities and whatnot. So that's our cost. The, right. the ten five. Any other questions? Discussion. All right. Thank you, Jason. Good job. We'll have you back. <laughs> Good job, <laughs> <laughs> All right, final item on the agenda number eight, discussion of capital investment plan financial model. So there are two things uh, we'd like to do with you. Um, Michael and Christine are coming up. Uh, we ran out a little bit of time last time. I want to go back through the overview of the what we look at as the approved projects and their status and how that affects where you are um, in terms of um, what our next steps might be and then talk a little bit about at least the initial next steps, the ask from the board um, and and what we might look at over the next maybe couple months as we are, are uh, walking through this process and move from looking at projects into what our, our, our funding strategies might be and how you may want to re-examine projects that are in the, in the existing CIP versus projects that are currently unfunded. So uh, Michael's going to walk through some of the slides that we sort of went through expeditiously last time because we were a little short of time and make sure that you understand how we are looking at that, that group of projects that had previously been approved and included in our funding model and then talk a little more about next steps from there. So take it away, Mike. Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. Michael Walters Young, Budget and Strategic Innovation Manager. I've also asked Paul to stay up in case you do have any specific questions, kind of where we are as we go through some of these you know, individual projects. Um, he will know vastly more about where we are in the projects than I will. So um, we want to make sure we put our best foot forward. In review, um, you have approved via previous rev resolutions in 2017 and 2019, the most recent 2019-68, uh, projects which we now estimate totaling approximately $483 million in total cost. They comprise four categories, and we'll spend a, a couple minutes going through each of the categories more in depth. Um, if you see a five-star next to these projects, that designates that they were in the BOMA's top 10 rating five years ago, it was the last time that we officially adopted this list. Um, these colors are based upon the scorecard that you see on the screen and is part of your packets, uh, which give you a general idea as to the f five to four-ish categories, um, those being fully completed projects, of which there are 11, under construction projects, of which there are six, uh, projects which are actively in right-of-way acquisition or formally in the bid process or about to be five, and then 15, which are in really two buckets, as we'll explain, but are really in the very early stages or early stages of design. Those that are significantly down the road in design, like the aforementioned project that you began your meeting with, and those that really are ideas and have not had much money, if any, spent on them at this point in time. So, it's important to know where you've been, to know where you are going to date. 
We have completed 11 projects at a cost of $50.7 million. Those include things such as Franklin Road, which we all get the opportunity to drive on uh, as we leave downtown. Uh, $8.4 million in major road resurfacing. Um, for your um, recollection and information, we have switched over the last several uh, CIPs and cycles and bond issuances for major arterial roadways with that need reconstruction um, and or repaving to use bond funding in order to do that. That's why they are pulled out here and collector roadways and or neighborhood streets are part of the annual street aid allocation, just to kind of set the, the context of those two um, funding resources. And that's since 2017. Fire Station 7, uh, the joint project of the ball fields at the Franklin Special School District, uh, the 96 West Trail, um, and then a series of smaller projects, um, improvements at Century Court that was primarily repaving of a lot of the apron at the sanitation center, um, et cetera, et cetera. And on down the list, all the way to the repaving of the Eastern Flank Road Circle uh, at $191,000. Under construction currently, include six projects, Bicentennial Park, uh, the home raising project with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Yes, that's an estimated all-in cost. That is not the city's. If you recall, the city's share is 17.5% of that 11.6. And, and at some point, though not now, I'd like to hear how many pro uh, uh, of the mm -hmm. allow, uh, let's see, the the projects that were approved, how many of them have actually done it? Because I've just heard from too many saying, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to do this. We're not going to, we're not going to put that, all that money in it to it. But anyway, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Greenway over um, that connects Harlandsdale Park to Chestnut Bend, which is currently under construction. Uh, the Bundle Bridge projects, which includes several different bridges. Uh, West Main Bridge is recently completed. Wonderful. And you can take a look at that, and, and some might even take their pictures on that bridge. <laughs> all that. Um, uh, the Hayes Home Restoration, Harlandsdale. This is a project that is majority funded by the Friends of Franklin Park. If you recall, we've made a couple budget amendments, foreshadowing to your 7 o'clock, uh, where there's a small amount of city funding, which is going to that. And then the Thompson Alley Neighborhood Park, at just over half a million dollars. Um, projects which are actively being bid or under right-of-way acquisition include Southeast Park Phase 2, McEwen Phase 4, Lockwood Glen Park, and um, that includes the dam at Robinson Lake, Lewisburg Avenue sidewalk improvements, and Jordan Road, uh, Aspen Grove to Mallory Lane. The final list is split into two parts. These are the projects which are still certainly in design only, um, but are ones that the list of five on this slide should be considered ones that we're significantly down, down the path on. Uh, City Hall, as we've discussed, the Long Lane Old Paytonsville Road connector, uh, McEwen Phase 5, that is a project that not only are we actively working on, but we are contractually obligated as a joint project with the City of Brentwood to do. Um, Liberty Park Improvements and the Main Barn at Harlandsdale. And the Main Barn at Harlandsdale is out to bid right now. So. Nice. Yep. So that, that, not the, um, that's our portion. Brentwood has the same portion. Uh, well, actually, Brentwood's, I think, is around 58%, and our okay. portion is around 42%. Okay. It's all based on where the roadway mm -hmm. lands <laughs> in between the two jurisdictions. And then this slide, which is approximately $100 million in total, are 10 projects which are very, very early in design. Um, that includes the intersection improvements at Mallory, North Royal Oaks, and Liberty, um, Carlisle Lane improvements, Church Street from Columbia to Second Avenue, Paytonsville Road and Pratt Lane, and then a series of trails and greenways. Um, the final project on this list is the current estimated cost to do um, updates to the sidewalks on Main Street. Um, like I said, that totals approximately $100.2 million. And in summary, that 483 approximately rolls up again into those categories. Uh, 382 call it 383 million, again, are either done, in progress, or significantly designed. 
Any questions on the individual projects? Alderman Barnhill. No question on the individual project. That $482 million was what in 2019? $325 million or so? He's in the 300 range. 328? Yeah. Closer Something to the like 300. That. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because re the because reason we did, and that's the reason they came out, was because that was the number that we were trying to work towards mm -hmm. to be able to come up with a capital project, right. not to go over the $328 million. Okay. $301,889,016. Okay. was the <laughs> estimate in 2019. Yeah. And I think Michael gave in the previous elements of this presentation, we saw some project yeah. growth around 70% in costs yeah. collectively. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did also see some revenue and other resources and, and help that. offset yeah. a chunk of that, but not all of that. So um, that's, yeah, that, the good thing is we are pretty conservative in what we estimate in terms of the resources to go to projects, but we saw some pretty significant growth in costs compared to where we were in 2018-19. So yeah, sixty-five percent growth in revenues, seventy-one percent growth in costs and expenses. I, I, I've got Alderman Peterson and then Alderman Burr. I just just wanted to ask you back on. I guess this is a, a slide ten, maybe, but it says Church Street, Columbia to Second Avenue, and I, uh, and that was mentioned in something to, earlier tonight. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, uh, you know, there's a there's a development that is there's a development that's being looked at out there uh you know uh connecting columbia with some other things mm -hmm. and i just wondered how, how that plays into the church street uh columbia to second avenue because that other one would be moving i guess margin street over to something else you're talking about the margin district project? Is yes. that what we're, There um, is some realignment there. Paul, right. do you have any no, assessment I mean, on how that might impact? We would this compare part? the two, and when they come through the development approval process, they'll have our plans, and we'll be working with them to mm -hmm. ensure that that's very well coordinated. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know of any impact that it's having right now, uh, but as we get as that project moves forward, it'll it'll be very well coordinated. But, Paul, but, talk a little. Do but, give but an overview is, of this project. That might be yes, helpful. Yes, yeah, so Church Street. This project really, in a lot of our downtown streetscape projects evolved this way. It was not a streetscape project. It's, it's essentially water and sewer Stop needs to be replaced on this roadway. Mm -hmm. okay. Gas company has approached us and they want to replace their infrastructure. We also have the stormwater, stormwater issues, issues in downtown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so we said, this is the opportunity. If we're ever going to get storm infrastructure in our downtown, now's the time to do it as one holistic project. Uh, and so it's really a utility project um, okay. that initiated this this to move forward. So every utility would get replaced essentially on the street. Mm -hmm. So this addresses some of the park view drainage issues that we... This would get us infrastructure so that one day a future board, we could future staff it. could okay. address the park view drainage area, which has been a problem for a very, very long time. So this is kind of downstream of that, but it would be, could be part of that s solution ultimately. Ultimately, yes. yes. Okay. Yep. One other question. Twenty million dollars for Carlisle Lane is that? I mean, that's a lot of money for a mile of road. <laughs> that's that's doing the entire stretch from Mac Catcher basically down to ninety six. There's a lot of unknowns. We don't have survey, so we have to make a lot of assumptions on the utility impacts and the right of way impacts. And that's so we're trying to care. We're trying to be conservative. Okay, as conservative as possible. Really, Del Rio to ninety six, right? Or is there some we, improvements we, on that we leg to Mac Hatcher? All the way up to okay. where Mac okay. Hatcher ended. Okay. Um, knowing that when we do get into the design, we can always reduce the scope or change the scope based on what the board wants to do. Alderman Burger, then Alderman Potts. Um, okay. Um, Alderman Burger, then Alderman So, I'm looking at all these numbers. We, we have impact fees that are applied here, and this is all not coming out of our pocket or, or general budget of our budget. So Mallory at Royal Oaks, we have impact fees that are paying for that. How much of the impact fees are paying for that? How much do we pay? So, uh, so one of the things that we will address in next steps, next steps. is you yep. will be getting the, the project by project 
breakdown. funding sheets the breakdown. that gives an allocation of how much of an impact fee versus how much we would anticipate borrowing versus right. how much would come from parkland dedication et, et cetera et cetera okay um so you'll you'll get that information so you can kind of see yeah um, yeah if you if you i was if, wondering when we'd get that yeah. if we go back to a month ago and the last time we presented um you know that overall funding matrix shows that all of the accumulated cash I want to say it was 5248 that we'd be borrowing <clears throat> an additional I think 195 million mm -hmm. and the balance call it nearly 300 would come from all other financing sources um certainly not just the 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 city's coffers but also some right. of the external sources as well yeah. so we we recognize that when you look at these all projects are not created the same in terms of what they're oh, pulling on none of them. uh and and that you know Mm. One, you may choose not or consider choose to choose not to do a project that may not free up the capacity you think it does. Yeah. The example I like to give is Liberty Park yeah. improvements, which is on the slide ahead of this. That's almost entirely funded by, by the park, park impact fees that were yep. collected in that quadrant. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be able to take that and put it no. in the Southeast Park no. or some other thing. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it really, that's your best option within that quadrant. Yeah. Now, maybe there are a few others, but there are, really aren't meaningfully. Mm -hmm. So that project might not be worth reprioritizing, but there might be others that free up more capacity for other projects. Yeah. And so th this, this breakdown Michael's talking mm -hmm. about will help you differentiate yes. that within these projects that might be eligible to reprioritize or yeah. pull back out and create some capacity along with ones that might really make a case for funding just because there's a lot of other sources, non-local sources in the mix. And I think when you present that to us, you should say, uh, maybe highlight which ones make no sense to reprioritize based on the financials. I have a couple more questions, but Greg, you were trying to yeah, come Potts in. Was next, yeah. But uh, did you want to, I'm, I'm still, I'm still oh, a, allocating my time, but I think you wanted to weigh in on that. My only question to, I guess, align with what you were saying, Bev, is it may be helpful for me to see the amount of dollars that are in the impact zones mm -hmm. yeah. so mm -hmm. that that may help us drive yep. projects in the community or in, in the area. That's so, good point. So that's good in the both road, road impact yeah. and yeah. parkland. 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 We can give you that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. good point. I knew, I knew you had something to say there. There's no road uh, impact so. fees assumed in this model, though. Well, there are. I think that's what well, we're asking for is that. So there are existing fees yeah. that are yeah. eligible so for we can, some projects. Future, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, existing. To, sure. to split yeah. the needs of the ongoing debt service, the assumption that's been made is that the existing cash that's been collected by both arterial and collector area, mm -hmm. that's available to finance projects. Okay. And then future would go to meet those ongoing obligations until at least we retire the debt service <laughs> being charged against it. Yeah, for, for instance, uh, the QN phase four is 47 million. Correct. So we're getting 27 million. So, uh, and possibly more. Possibly. We're working yeah, to get you know. another chunk. So, so, what? How many millions is coming out of our mm -hmm. coffers? Mm -hmm. Okay, basically, we need mm -hmm. to know that, mm -hmm. so that we say, okay, we don't have to come up with forty-seven million. We know that, so we can put that and allocate it other places. Uh, Liberty Park, the Parkland uh, dedication. Thanks. That that was a great example, uh, because that has to go into that quadrant. Mm -hmm. The only other thing I wanted to mention. Um, and, and Mallory at Roll Oaks, that's a lot of the impact fees as well that we've gotten from the development impact fees that are going into that to improve that intersection. Correct? I, I we've got a lot of impact fees. We have a lot of building that. impact fees. Yes. We, you know, I, I'm, I'm interested in the financials here, mm -hmm. regardless of the project. I'm interested mm -hmm. in the financials. So... I want to know how much in in the development impact fees are going to go into that quadrant into that project because we north side McEwen, all those impact fees are going to be able to be spent here to improve because it's it's a direct line of that traffic in that area and that's why that has to be improved so um anyway that's that's my comment the only other thing is um I want to say one thing. We got to figure out a way to sort of backtrack a little bit. That Thompson Alley Park. I think I talked to Lisa here tonight. Lisa and I. I, I talked to Lisa, Lisa, you and I had that conversation. And 
that made sense after you talked me through it, but I think we have to have a stopgap somewhere because Thompson Alley Park, I drove down there the other day and looked at it, it's very nice. But that project was supposed to be like $250,000 is over a half a million dollars now. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm sitting on that Thompson Lane looking at that park and going, how many houses are there? Six houses, I think. And six houses get to enjoy that park. And I'm not begrudging them that, but that's a half a million dollars that we're putting out of our city money, taxpayer dollars, to, unless it's coming from somewhere else, you need to help me out, maybe I'm wrong here, but we're putting that money into a park that probably nobody's gonna use except the people that live in that lane. Now, somebody down the street wants to come down and enjoy that park, fine. But people driving by, that that's not a destination place. That's not a place that people are gonna go use that park. That's gonna be used, and so we basically build a private park for six homes. Now. When we first talked about it and there's some significance hi history there, mm -hmm. I get that. I'm not begrudging any of that. I'm just saying, is there a point in time when we go, whoops, we thought this was gonna be two or 250,000. Now we're way up to half a million. Do we need to reevaluate that and maybe not do that project or do it differently? And then Lisa and I were talking and she said, well, sometimes you look at it and go, well, what would it take through the years to mow it, maintain it? And does that cost of offsetting the mowing equate to half a million dollars over how many years? I don't know. It's sort of mind boggling to me. I'm still left with my mouth open going, I don't get this. So <laughs> I, I'm not trying to diss on Thompson Station or the people that live there. It has nothing to do with them. You can put this anywhere. It could be in, in another lane and another place of town. It could be in my ward. I don't care. I would say, whoa, no, wait a minute. I don't think that, that works. I, I want to speak so, to that. Yes. I so do. Um, I, ne I need some help on that yeah. because I want to, when I drove by there the other yeah. day, it really, it just got to me. I well, I, I think a couple things to consider. Yeah. I, I believe it's more than six homes. There's some multifamily there as well. Yeah. And these are also mm -hmm. uh, pretty underserved uh, residents. Mm -hmm. They're very limited Right, and th right. these, th this is a lower end of the economic scale. Yeah. So I think we are providing service where there is none today to folks that may have limited access to begin with. Sure. So I think it really fills a need that we're missing there. The other thing to consider is one of the other projects that's in the mix here is the sidewalk improvements that will continue down Lewisburg, connect to Eastern Flank, et cetera. That also creates a connection opportunity to this small park. So you'll have folks that that may be a harder uh, to traverse today that when we have that in place, that will be easier to access that small park as well. So I think there are a couple things there. Um, it, it, we do recognize that it went up from what it was, um, but you know, Doubled. when we looked yeah. at it, we, and, and we, we yeah. did highlight the difference in budget when you awarded the bid. We did do that, um, but we also recognized that's what it costs. It was a good bid. I mean, I don't think we felt like we were getting sure. taken advantage of. You saw that with um, the Robinson Lake project. We rejected those bids because we felt that was not a good bid. Now, it's a much larger scale in terms of cost. But we always examine and say, did we get a good bid? And so does this just tell us this is what it costs to deliver a project like this? And so there is always that that kind of that filter we go through when we we take a bid and it comes in higher than than expected, um, and so there there was we were pretty thoughtful about whether to even bring that or how to bring that forward to you, and I, I think it does fill a real need in the community. So I yeah I, I, I hear what you're saying, but yeah. I also feel like long term, um, in the grand scheme of things, you're serving a neighborhood that really can benefit from it, and uh, there will be some some better access in the future as well. Uh, and I want to make I hope sure, that helps. Yeah, it does. But I, I just want to make sure you know I wasn't debating sure. the need. Yeah. That wasn't my purpose. Mm -hmm. um, the only other thing I want to say is I think we need to look at hiring in-house bricklayer and person who does pavers and stone and brick and bring somebody on because I think parks can use them. I think streets can use them. And maybe subcontracting out a lot of the work, it may take twice as long to get it done, but subcontracting out the work, and I'm looking at a half a million dollar price tag here, 
maybe we can do more of that work in-house in when I found out that we really don't have somebody that can lay brick and do those things. Mm -hmm. So I would ask in this next budget coming up that maybe we look at somebody because I think Lisa and, and Steve Grubb needs to be weighing in on that. Could we utilize a person if we would put that that into our budget as a full-time employee? Just wanted to add that. Let me, uh, I got Alderman Potts, Alderman Baggett, and then Alderman Peterson, and then we'll try to wrap uh, this section up. Go ahead, Alderman Potts. Sir, I'd like to say this is well timed tonight. <laughs> uh, so thank you all for all the hard work that goes into putting this presentation together. Uh, Michael, I can go ahead and assure you that uh, uh, sitting here with bated breath to look at the next uh, report that we'll get regarding <laughs> all of these expenses. Uh, the one I want to speak to right now um, is on slide nine, and this is the Long Lane Old Paytonsville Road connector, mm -hmm. and the total cost on it right now is forty-five, uh, forty-five million seven hundred thirty-seven, mm -hmm. or seven hundred thirty-five thousand. Um, and I just wanted to ask if we could get a little bit of clarity, and then this conversation is going to carry out, I'm thinking, for uh, uh, potentially a couple more meetings. But mm -hmm. when we say it's committed, could you give us a definition of what committed means? So what I would say is, let me give you an overview of where we're at, where we're at with the project okay. um, and what our plan was to do next, okay. and then we'll see where that goes. But essentially, we've we've heard the board's concern about the cost of the project. Mm -hmm. It can definitely be scaled down uh, substantially if that's the board's wishes. So right now we're almost at a point where we can start acquiring right away, uh, but we check in on every project. And so what we would do is bring back two or three different options on that project mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. see what you wanna do as far as moving forward with right away acquisition and moving forward with construction. <laughs> For example, you know, there, there's, there would have been some gaps created but we said, let's just design the whole thing, get a good cost estimate for it, and then bring it back to see how the board wants to proceed with that project. Um, so I, I would anticipate in the next two to three months, we'll be ready to have those conversations, um, depending on what y'all want to see. And to okay. date on that project, I think we've spent around $5 million, something in that ballpark. Uh, that's design work. And then there was a significant piece of land we did acquire because the opportunity came our way and we got board approval on that specifically, but we did acquire that because it was kind of that window of opportunity opened and we, mm -hmm. we felt we needed to at least control that. So that's probably the biggest single piece of that 5 million yep. is we did acquire a pretty significant chunk of right of way that is kind of, I think it's really the intersection right of mm -hmm. existing or revised long lane in this this overpass stretch. Yes, sir. So, so the reason why I'm asking right now, and I spent three hours, if you just count yesterday, three hours on the phone with HOA presidents for Ward 3, uh, not to count the two hours from last week with another one of our former elected officials, and then also have spent multiple hours um, uh, looking at all of our projects, but with this one specifically, probably five hours just in the past five days. So the reason why I say that is, is um, and, and Eric, I'll, I'll, I'll defer to you and then also just across all of, all of our department leaders is the concern from constituents in this area, especially in the Berry Farms area, is to have a better under, and not just Berry Farms, the HOAs in proximity of that is house is really going to have a positive impact on traffic right now. And I know I've taken a look at the map. We, we've reviewed that, that hairpin turn that comes back around that leads along the frontage road that's supposed to keep people out of the neighborhood to feed along to the commercial area. But getting data, hard data to address this is what I'm getting right now. I've received from the, the Franklin Alliance of Homeowners Associations for Ward 3, which is 21 HOAs, the majority of them have concerns about this project. So I, I want to make sure that it's properly represented that yet at the same time, over in Ladd Park, there's 1,240 homes currently. Doesn't count every single car that's there, but that's just the homes that are in full support of the Long Lane Overpass. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we are providing data to our citizens that is, ob it's, it's not objective, it is pure data, it is fact. This is why we're doing this, because we're also looking at 
how does it have this long-term impact on what we know are failed intersections in this area? And the growth that's about to occur with all the commercial, you can name in and out, their headquarters, their restaurant, everything else that everything else that's about to happen, this intersection or this project, excuse me, is extremely important for us to know did we miss the boat and not build it previously due to a variety of reasons and now we're at the point where we need to move it forward or does it make sense to take these funds and reallocate them somewhere else ideally yes i would love to say all of it needs to say in ward three i'll be selfish but we've all seen all of the traffic uh, the failed traffic intersections that are currently occurring so i'm elevating this to staff because these are the conversations that I'm having right now, and I need to make sure that this is a, uh, aside from, there were two other projects listed above this, above $45 million. Mm -hmm. This is the only one, aside from City Hall, listed in the design phase. Mm -hmm. So I need us to make sure that we get this right. Yeah, I think when we, when we bring back the project with options, we can look at how it will shift traffic immediately. Mm -hmm. um, just off the top of my head, a lot of our models are built based on full build out. Mm -hmm. This is the high growth area of the city. I think that the board chose to allocate funding to this area of the city, that project, simply because it's that high growth area. Mm -hmm. um, but we can certainly get you the data and see what it does to the shifting of traffic uh, in the short term. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot back. of the projections at the interchange that show that it's going to fail, it's not going to fail tomorrow. It's going to fail with a Barry Farms build out. Reams Fleming build out, which we all know is years and years and years of construction and development still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all in back. And I think that's an interesting point because I'm getting calls, and I, this is not the comment I had to make, but I'll just add on to that is that I'm getting, you know, I hear about, um, you know, Eddie Lane and Boyd Mill mm -hmm. and, um, you know, West Main, you know, some of these streets uh, in, the, in Ward 4 that, there's never going to be a development partner, probably, that would fund a substantial amount of those projects. And so whether we choose to do it today or we choose to do it in 10 years, it's probably going to be most of the city. Whereas for this bridge, which happens to be close to the same cost as the sticks and bricks of City Hall, so it's not insignificant. Um, it, the county ag center is there the baskin property uh all the stuff that's going to happen at the end of carruthers there are some development partners as that grows in the future and so we need the bridge there's no question i've told you that like we need it there's no doubt in the next 20 to 30 years maybe sooner than that depending on how the pace of growth so uh, i think i want to y'all to hear hear that part i i really want to make sure though with the time, um, we kind of always get to this place when you present, Michael, on something like <laughs> where we get kind of in the weeds of the projects. Uh, and this was meant to be it, talking about the funding for the capital investment plan. And I still don't have some, I think that, that we need to probably focus, because I think we'll have more time as we rank projects to talk about the merits of the projects. But I still find it hard. And, and maybe this, as you develop this next schedule of uh, projects and cost and et cetera, um, we're showing this deficit, but the, within that deficit there of 363 million, I'm on page 29 of one of these documents. Um, within that, there is the federal fund. I mean, that's not just debt, or that's not, that, that's, that's the project deficit, excuse me. I'm up here at the 482 total funding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, got it. So, a, a D is internal local source city of Franklin, the 414. External grants private utility, help me understand E, approved CIP projects, a 68 million. Would that be the number that we're talking about? Yeah, that, would that be that number that we're talking about, external funds? Is that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, there you go. So, 414 million. And our capacity is, well, you're telling us our capacity for the next 10 years CIP plan is how much? So on the screen right now is what was presented at the December 12th meeting. Right. Um, and it summarizes page 10 of the detail packet from that meeting. Um, 
at the CIP as it has been presented to you over many separate meetings from the different um, individual project areas is a billion seventy one million in total requested costs of which we have total approved financing to match your approved projects of four hundred and eighty three million dollars. Mm -hmm. Now that means that there's a net additional five hundred and eighty eight million dollars worth of projects for your consideration. The balance of available funding is roughly sixteen million dollars of internal from cash and or other sources. Okay. And two hundred and eight point five million in X Eternal. That's the number. Yeah. So there's a lot of, in that billion dollars of total forecast projects, we are making some very large assumptions regarding grants, partners, etc. Mm -hmm. Those will have to have a match mm -hmm. for some of them to go forward. But there's a three, that, that deficit, that yellow line with the red, big red number of 363 million, that's the amount of money that you would need to come up with if you want to do all of the projects as they have been submitted to you. That's what that slide is telling you. Got it. That, that's helpful. So it's the two of the, of the approved 482, 68 million is estimated. Now, we're not going to hold you down to the $56. Thank you. But um, <laughs> but the that is an <laughs> estimated <laughs> external. And then the 208 is that we're pro of the proposed but not yet approved projects. That's what we expect from that. Now, Mount Catcher Southeast was in that. That's so that's a, yep. a big chunk of that. It's probably right. mm -hmm. 90 million of that. Um, 80 million, whatever it, is, or whatever it was. So, okay. Um, yeah, I think we just need to boil this down. I think these are the kind of the decision points for us is, all right, well, we we have, we can do this. And then I think we really have to, especially now that I brought up the Mac Catcher Southeast, which is like, quite frankly, has thrown my entire outlook on CIP kind of on its head. If we're not, and I, you know, we're not going to be able to deliver that in 10 years. I know that y'all are working on some, some solutions and we don't need to get into all that, but that has a big impact on what to uh, think about this project cost. And so, you know, we've got this board here, I think is a smart board and good board. And I think if we can, we got thrown that curveball, and the more time we spend, I don't want to stall, but like the more time we can now troubleshoot that problem uh, so that we can deliver and work with the state on that and figure out solutions, the better, because I'm looking at stuff that um, quite frankly, do we need a the, this long lane bridge or do we need Mount Catra Southeast? Okay. I know we're 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 knees deep on the bridge, but if it requires us to pony up to to do Mount Catra Southeast and that bridge has to wait till Baskin property or you know something else in that area happens, like you just kind of have to you just kind of have to make a tough decision. Um, and the Lad Park you know friends will have to just wait until but with that Southeast. Uh, is huge. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that I know we can go through this and we can all kind of rank them and whatever, but like that's a huge assumption mm -hmm. that is now completely different. So those are my comments, but I look forward to the next meeting we get to discuss. Thanks. Alderman Peterson, you get the final word. I just have I want to close out. something that's <laughs> that we've still got so much to do, but I want to say something about the project that was mentioned a little bit earlier, the Mallory, North Royal Oaks, Liberty intersection. I say a, min a minority of people that are here today ever voted on p making that a roundabout. And I'm, I'm saying this because Alderman Blanton would be talking about it <laughs> if she were here. <laughs> so that may be something we want to look at. Yeah, that'll, that'll be coming back for a decision too. We're getting ready to be at a point where we can acquire the right-of-way. We've been working through some of the utilities. So again, before we move to another phase of a project, okay. we come and have a check-in with the board. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Eric, real close to, uh, real quick to close it out. Um, I want to give you some homework or a heads up on your homework between now and the end of the month. Uh, I'd like to ask if there are any additional projects, things that you didn't see that you want to see, uh, that are on your mind, please let us know. You don't have to do the cost estimating or anything else, but just the concept. Um, you may remember several years ago, Alderman Blanton brought us the sidewalk 
along Murfreesboro right. Road. When, that right. literally came from, is there something we're missing? Right. And she said that, and we went and got some mm -hmm. estimates, and lo and behold, the board wanted to do that, and it ended up in the, in the, in the CIP. So mm -hmm. are there things missing that should be on there? Mm -hmm. And I like that from you, whatever that is, whatever list that is, by the end of the month, and we can put that in and do a project sheet and give you a sense of that. So that can be in the mix if we miss something in the 73 projects that we've given you to date. The other piece I'd like to ask you to do, this is a little artificial, but it will, might give us a sense of what you just talked about, is if you would give us up to five projects that you'd be interested in removing from that CIP. So approved or proposed? within the approval. So that those, especially those last two slides that we talked about mm -hmm. that have those projects that are in that design phase, that's a chance to see if there's some consensus about, we really want to explore re-examining this project or that project, because that has a way of really adding some potential capacity by reprioritizing. Doesn't mean you might not want to still rank or mm -hmm. think about projects that were on that list, but you might want to say, I want to back this out and see how it compares to these other things that are unfunded at this stage. Mm -hmm. So um, I pick five just because it gives you something to work against. Yeah. If you really need an extra one or two, we can take it. But I'm really looking at, is there a consensus among you about some projects mm -hmm. that you really want to step back and say, let's reconsider this. And I might want to prioritize collectively some things there because that'll help us understand what would be worth doing a prioritization exercise with you within the existing capacity. Mm -hmm. The other thing, staff, then the staff homework, we notice there's more staff homework than there's, there's BOMA homework, <laughs> but we're gonna get you those detailed sheets mm -hmm. so you can kind of see that local versus other sources that might help you understand how those projects might fit into a, a, a funding prioritization and uh, consideration there. Um, the other piece is on the 27th, we are bringing in, happens to be both our bond council and our financial advisor to talk about some ideas and concepts that have been implemented of elsewhere in the state of Tennessee around delivering yeah. infrastructure mm -hmm. associated with development. Um, it happens that they are our, they've worked on some of these projects. Uh, and so they can give us some insights on how those have worked other places, what that looks like from a city uh, commitment, obligation, facilitation, what that maybe puts on the private development side, et cetera. And that really will cut across both this CIP, but also could have an application to some of the water and sewer discussion as well. And so this is something we're generating. Christine and I have had a little chance to do some briefing with this group. We'll probably do a little more before we get there so we can help guide that conversation for you. But I think that'll be a real useful time to think about some other, other approaches and how that might fit with some of the projects we're looking at. So uh, we're gonna be kind of all CIP all the time in one form or another over the next couple months. Mm -hmm. uh, the other piece is that last bullet of uh, what are your other options for capacity? Um, as we start to build the budget, are there other ways that we free capacity up to help address more needs? Whether that's looking at hotel motel tax, whether that's looking at uh, reappraisal that's coming. You may remember right. 2016, we did some things with rate that helped us have some capacity in what we called the Invest Franklin program, which is really the backbone of this 10 year plan. Do you want to explore that as well? well? We'll try to lay out and anything else that might come up in that discussion. Uh, we want to put that all as much on the table as we can as we uh, gear up for things that has Im implications on the budget we structure and recommend to you as well as how we work through what are you? What do we prioritize with you, uh, heading forward? Do Do we know what sources or programs uh, our consultants are going to bring us that they're going to look at? They're going to talk about some of the um, like TIF. Ta tax increment financing yeah. development mm -hmm. district type of of okay. options. So that and they're going to give you some. We're going to have some real examples. Uh, Chattanooga is an example, you know, Spring Hill has done something with a specific development partner on the Murray County side. Um, and so we can give you some, there's, some there's, real examples, details, but also what else is in the law or not in the law yeah. that mm -hmm. would allow I, us to do things. I'd Christine like may well speak to it. programs that they might look at. I mean, do we know it like, uh, start? We are, the, what, what they're, what they're focusing on is what's legal in Tennessee. Right. Mm -hmm. so Today. <laughs> it's, it's the payment in lieu of tax programs. There's, there's the tax increment financing that, that you've already have, yeah. this, you've seen over the years. 
um, in this region. Um, there are some special assessments. Um, so we're, we're, we're pulling that together now. They, they do know um, that there has been um, interest in, in really you know, learning about what, certainly what's legal in Tennessee um, is maybe different or could be different than what um, you know of what's legal in other states. But they, they, they are bond counsel to um, many different um, cities and counties in, in Tennessee. Right. So th their perspective is pretty extensive. Uh, and and PFM has a broader context <laughs> of projects that have been done nationally. So you may get a little bit of that flavor, but we're really, like Christine said, focused on what has been done, what do the yeah, existing like parameters in Tennessee law, law allow us to do, so we can study what could those. that look like? Yeah, and I'd, I'd caution us to not throw uh, our ideas out there on that 1% hotel motel tax yet because there are some major projects that might come before this board the next year uh, to consider, and we were always sort of keeping that 1% back for a very, very special project that would, in essence, that project would then generate very uh, high amount of income for, for the city. So, you know, it's not something we just want to use willy-nilly. It's got to be for something that's going to really generate uh, tax dollars back to us. Thanks. Very quick. Right, very quick. <laughs> this budget assume this model assumes no increase in uh, in um, road impact fees, no increase in parkland fees. But we have before and no increase in property taxes. And no, in or in taxes this is a, as That's is. Right. Which is great. Yes. Love that working assumption. But we also have before us increases in That's parkland right. identification fees, increases mm -hmm. in road impact mm -hmm. fees, increases mm -hmm. in sewer. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting for me, I don't know if this would be interesting for everyone else to see. We're kind of considering it like this, but also, and, it, and I know that's like, that's definitely like crystal ball. Right. That's definitely cri mm -hmm. crystal ball-y. But at the same time, before we make, pull other levers, invest Franklin, mm -hmm. hotel, mm -hmm. motel. Mm -hmm. I would really like to understand what mm -hmm. the impact of those impact fees mm -hmm. could be. I know, again, it's crystal ball. It is. And we don't want to play yeah. in that, but we also, you also know how to play conservatively mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in those estimates. And I feel confident that the, you know, between the, the team here, we can do that. But I just keep thinking when we're making all these decisions, but then we're going to, two months from now, increase the impact fees. Mm -hmm. and then. Are we going to have more or less? Or, and, and so anyway, we don't have to talk about it right now, but I'll leave it with that. Thank you. Just, just one very Vice minor Mayor. thing. Uh, we've been talking, we've been going through this, but there's a, there was a new CIP update presentation that, that we kind of didn't go through. And there are some places in it when it says on page 12 or on page 15, 14 or something. Where were those? I mean, I, I don't have a thing like this that had that had all of this that we referred to. So somebody just tell me later. The, the, there, if memory serves, this current agenda item on Civic Clerk has three attachments. Uh -huh. It is the presentation. So the, 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 the presentation that's on the screen currently. Yes, exactly. Which is tonight's. Mm -hmm. It the new presentation is the the presentation that was presented on December twelfth. And the page number references in that presentation from December 12th, reference the third attachment, which is the detailed financial summaries of the no, revenues. It could, it, uh, that, that, that's, you mean the, 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 the third then attachment. that would re re reverse to the, the fourth thing that we have on, I mean, the, the third the third thing here. It all capital fund, it's called capital this. funding model. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Let me tell you. It goes back to the, uh, no, but, but no, it doesn't. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I'm we'll take well, a look. Let's, let's talk yeah. afterwards. Yeah. We don't need to. Before yeah. the uh, children's choir storms the room here, yeah. uh, we're adjourned. We're going to be back here. Everybody, back in here at seven fifteen. Seven fifteen. Thank you. Thank Good you. discussion. Thank you.